Today we are diving into the Bosch MDI-2. Well, I'll let you in on a little secret. This is a Chinese knockoff. Stick around. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the garage and I'm super excited to be diving into the MDI slash MDI-2. Now these units are basically the same thing except for the MDI-2 has a couple extra features as far as the Wi-Fi goes. This thing will allow you to connect it to your router as opposed to ad hoc where you're connected directly to it. So once this is connected to the router, you can plug it into your car, pull up the MDI software, which we'll look at here in a second, and remotely connect to it without having to go Wi-Fi point to point. The other part that the MDI-2 has over the MDI-1 is that this unit will uh, do Global B, which is the latest communications protocol that they're just now rolling out. So most of you don't need to spend the extra money. This one's about 400 bucks for the Chinese knockoff. Now, brand new, these units from Bosch are about $1,400. And it's kind of an economy of scale thing where Bosch has these things made. They may make a thousand of them, ship them out to dealerships and uh, you know service uh, shops and things like that. Well, then the Chinese manufacturer makes 20,000 of them and they can sell them for dirt cheap. So this should work exactly like the Bosch unit. And that's what we're here to see. And on top of it, we're going to be using our BenchForce Power Block 2. Thank you to BenchForce for supporting the garage, for being a uh, supporter, a uh, sponsor of the garage. I love this device. It is my favorite tool right now uh, for doing any kind of bench logging, uh, programming, uh, troubleshooting, and things like that. And the cool thing about it is, is it has these nice proprietary snap-on connectors that you're not going to accidentally disconnect along with your OBD2 port and your power port and then your ECMs you get a harness like this this is a E67 this plugs into the bench force unit and it's not going to come loose in the middle of programming that's an E67 uh, fourth gen I've got a E99 fifth slash sixth gen five and a half gen whatever you want to call the new E99s for the brand new Silverados uh, and bench force has been cool enough to send me a third gen for the uh, p01 p59 platform that I'm, I'm going to be doing a video on later on but check them out there will be a link down in the description down below thanks again to bench force and let's go ahead and get everything hooked up and connected and running okay one thing to keep in mind is that the mdi2 has to be connected into an obd2 port that supplies power or else the unit itself will not power up it takes about 30 seconds for it to power up and I'm going to go ahead and pull up our screen here. This is the NDI Manager. And here's a quick tip. I'm using Chrome, Internet Explorer. Don't use Edge. Whenever you launch this, make sure you run as administrator. It will save you a lot of headache down the, down the road. But we will just do Bosch MTI2 software. It's the same software for the MDI1 and MDI2. Now, granted, this is 8533, which I believe is an older version. Here's our unit now. We are showing that we're connected. You always have to connect up via USB the first time, but once you connect up with USB, you can then come in here uh, if it will connect. Sometimes this thing can be a little, the software is a little finicky and it doesn't want to connect. If so, just kind of power cycle everything and plug it back in and out. Uh, I've had this happen a couple times and I think it's the software. I don't think it's actually the interface itself. But as I said, you got to plug in with USB the first time and then you can come in here after you get connected to the MDI, set up your wireless interface and do your access port if you want to do uh, the wireless side of it. We're just going to stick to uh, USB for now and it's still booting up over here. There, it just finished. Now we can try and connect up. There, we're connected. If we go over to help, we can look at the variations. This says 853353. That is the version that's on the website. Now, I downloaded this version and it actually brought up an earlier version. And it may have been the version that was on the MDI itself whenever I connected up through SPS. So keep that in mind. Whenever you do an update through SPS for this stuff, uh, you may have to reboot. I did once. So now we're going to go over to AC Delco Tech Connect. I'm going to log in real quick. Okay, now that I'm logged in, we got a couple options here. SPS is going to be the one that we focus on today, and that is for actually programming modules, ECMs, BCMs, TCMs, things like that. And so uh, I actually have four active right now, as you can see over here. We're going to use one of my existing actives ones, but if you need to do your own programming, you can add a vehicle for two years for 40 bucks, and it's based off of VIN number. You can also use this for GDS2, which is the uh, later variation of Tech 2 for the newer vehicles. Tech 2 is only good up until about, what, 2000? 
2013 on some platforms. Some platforms even before that might require GDS2. And then they've got different prices where you can get three days access for $57 for troubleshooting or if you're serious and hardcore, you can go for a year for $575. Same with the Tech2 Win software. Where this differs from something like the uh, VCX Diag, that software is bootleg. And so it doesn't work very well. It's very hard to get those devices to work. So by spending the extra $100 for an MDI, uh, you have a device that works like the factory devices that they're using at GM. Uh, and so keep that in mind. You can save money by going the cheap route, but there's going to be some headaches. You can go a little bit more expensive. You shouldn't have any of these headaches. Now, I will tell you, you noticed how I right clicked on. Uh, Chrome and I chose run as administrator it will save you headaches down the road especially whenever you're updating software in particular the wrapper for the uh, uh, for the MDI 2 to in order to work with SPS so make sure you're always running in uh, administrator and you also need to install Java but if you just go over here and type in Java Java software you can go to the Java download grab this version and it will work. This is the version that I'm currently running. So let's go ahead. We're going to grab one of these VIN numbers. This is probably a Cadillac XLR. And it'll say, oh, it's already in use. That's because I was logged in previously. It's going to terminate that one and let us open up. So big thing now, we're going to go into the SPS system. And on Chrome, it won't launch this natively. On Internet Explorer, it will. On Chrome, it'll just ask you to download this file. Then once it's done downloading, you can click it, and it's going to launch SPS. We'll go ahead and let us do this thing in the background. It'll pop up a software installation table. Now, pay attention. It'll show you your installed versions. The Tech 2 driver 7, MDI is 8.5. It says available versions. Make sure you choose do not install on these older versions, but we need to install this J2534 wrapper. This is what allows SPS to talk to the MDI. And if you do not run this as administrator, this will not work. Trust me, I know because I tried. So now that we've ran it as administrator, you can see that we have installed it successfully. If we hit this button, our SPS will pop up. Let me drag it over so we can see it. And here it is. Now, whenever we select it, we're going to do a J2534 uh, tool. And we are replacing and programming because we have an ECM that we don't know that is necessarily for this vehicle. I'm going to go ahead and plug it in now. And then we will hit next. It should pop up and it will say, OK, we need to connect it to the vehicle. Uh, let's go ahead and we will turn it on and hit next. So it did not ask us which device that we wanted to use. So I'm going to go back here and do reset J2534 tool. It should pop up and say, hey, what do you want to use? And it doesn't act like it is. And that is worrisome at best because it should be asking us to choose a tool. We will try this anyways, but I have a sneaking suspicion we may have to restart Okay, here it goes. Now it finally popped up and it's saying, hey, which tool are you using? And we are using the MDI-2 in this case. If you had the MDI-1, you would choose it. We'll hit continue. And then now it's gonna pop open a window and say, hey, choose one of these. Now, I've got this device. It is not allowing me to connect. I'm going to disconnect in the background here to make sure that is not causing me an issue. And now we can connect here. Okay, it is communicating with the device. I show on the device itself, the car is lit up, the USB port is lit up on the MDI-2, and it is connected to our E67, and there it grabbed our VIN number that is currently on the E60, or actually this is the one we're programming. So we will collect next here, and it's going to give us, okay, so it says it is not assigned. Okay, so this is the VIN number that is currently on this. This is a 549 VIN. This looks to be a uh, Corvette ZR1. Okay. We're going to go back. I'm going to show you what we've got put in here. And here's the cool thing about it. It's going to pull up. This is the VIN of that is on the ECM right now. That is for a uh, Corvette. I'm going to paste in the VIN number for our Cadillac because we're trying to put this program in. And it's going to take us over to our options here. So this is the uh, powertrain vehicle control module. We're programming that. We're going to go normal. VCI is if you have a specific code uh, from the uh, GM tech line for options. We normally don't have options or options to get those codes, so we're just going to do normal. And it's going to tell us, turn the, exist the uh, ignition off, remove the existing controller from the vehicle. We pull it out, put the new one in, turn the ignition back on, and we'll go ahead and hit next. It's going to communicate with this ECM. 
and it's going to write everything in. Okay, now it's showing us the different operating systems for the main operating system that were available. You can uh, go down here, look at the history, showing what all they've, they've done, uh, you know, enhancements for these DTCs, things like that. We don't care about any of that because we're going to be installing the latest greatest, which is 12614654. We hit next, and then next, and it's going to download, which is already done, and now it's going to reprogram. Okay, we got about three minutes left here and I wanna to touch on a couple tips that are gonna help you in the programming process, getting this thing set up. As I said, the big one is go out, get the latest version of Java, get that installed. Do that right away, it'll help you out a lot. Then go out, look for the Bosch MDI software, whether or not you're using the MDI 1 or the MDI 2, both of them are the same software platform. Now, whenever you connect up to SPS the first time, it will update your device to the latest version of the uh, hardware uh, so just be prepared for that and if it has issues connecting after doing updates like that reboot your computer I had to reboot maybe twice to get this thing to work the big one though Make sure whenever you launch your browser that you are right-clicking and choosing run as administrator That will allow you to make sure that all of the software that is trying to load whenever you launch something like GDS 2 or SPS gets properly loaded. Without that wrapper being loaded, this thing just does not work. It will not find the device. And as you saw, whenever we went in there, we actually had to disconnect from the GD, uh, GM MDI manager because it popped up a new window through SPS to connect to it. So if you're going through and setting this thing up on your network, you don't have to worry about this. Once you get it set up, you're not going to be using the MDI manager anymore. Then whenever SPS is looking for the MDI, it's going to pop open that window and say, hey, which uh, MDI or MDI2 are you trying to connect to? So keep those tips in mind. It will help you out a lot to streamline this installation process. It's not that bad. Bosch MDI software, Java, launch your browser with as the administrator. Those three tips right there will make sure that this is a successful task whenever you get around to trying to program a module or use GDS2. Okay, so we're done. And as you can see here, there's actually some cool stuff that pops up like the warranty claim code in case you're replacing this for a warranty. Cool thing about that, that claim code will show up. There are specific uh, uh, warranty updates that come out for special vehicles are certain vehicles. I've gone through and done recalls on my own vehicles through that and I have the warranty claim codes. You can call in and say, hey, here's the warranty claim code for this VIN. I've already completed this. Stop sending me those notifications. Uh, other than that, it's going to tell you to go ahead and turn off the ignition to so reset the controller and then clear any DTCs. And then other than that, we are done. In fact, we can turn this back on, hit the clear DTC button. It's going to clear DTCs, but we would get a ton more on this device or this uh, ECM because it's not plugged into anything except for our, tent, our test uh, setup here. So keep that in mind. That's kind of the steps. We touched on the high points and the low points. I'll go into uh, GDS2 later on because I want to do a comparison of using GDS2 with something like an MDI versus using an aftermarket scan tool. Uh, so keep your eyes peeled for that. If you have any questions, as always, go ahead, hit everything up down below into the comments. I'll try and get back to you, answer your questions. Uh, I'm pretty happy, as I said, there was a couple steps that I stumbled through on the initial setup, but once I got it set up, man, everything went smooth as silk. And uh, the nice thing about it is, is, is that it is, as far as the software is concerned, this is an authentic GDI2. It doesn't know that it's a Chinese knockoff. It works just like the factory uh, device. Uh, big shout out again to Benchforce for uh, sponsoring the channel and hooking us up with some awesome equipment to do cool videos like this. Uh, so you know the drill. Thanks for stopping by the garage. Remember, always be tuning.